So, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, I'm happy to welcome you today to this uh, webinar on some of the opportunities of doing business in Luxembourg. Um, for those of you who joined us uh, on time, you managed to see a couple of beautiful uh, images, drone images of, of Luxembourg City um, and some of the countryside around. So we're going to deep dive into the digital side and the cybersecurity opportunities um, and the strategy of Luxembourg in general. Before we get started, I would just like to give you some housekeeping uh, points here. Uh, the chat function is open, so please go ahead and uh, exchange with the other people on the on the, the, the registration and also with the, the panelists, if you like. Um, if you have any questions, please post those in the Q&A section so that we can pick them up towards the end and uh, we'll be very happy to, to reply to those for you. So today we have um, some very interesting speakers both from uh, ministries and from commercial enterprises. And I would like, first of all, to pass over to um, Mrs. Cindy Tereba, who is the Director of International Affairs at the Luxembourg Chamber of Commerce, for some opening words. Cindy. Thank you very much, David. I hope you can hear me. Yes, Thank you very much, David. So indeed, um, uh, it's my, my, my honor today to welcome you and to open up this uh, webinar, which is presenting Luxembourg's digital and data-driven uh, economy. And this webinar is organized by Lux Innovation. It's the Luxembourg's National Innovation Agency and the Luxembourg Ministry of the uh, Economy with the support of uh, Home Lux and the Luxembourg Belgium Chamber of Commerce in Romania and Moldova. So I would like to extend my special welcome to you, all of you, the guests, um, to the co-organizers of this webinar, to His Excellency Ambassador Paul Steinmetz um, and uh, our esteemed guest speakers. And Luxembourg is indeed uh, home to a very competitive data-driven economy and the national strategy for data-driven innovation confirms and reconfirms the government's ambition to remain a pioneer in the digital innovation. Um, so Luxembourg is already very renowned as a center of excellence in cybersecurity and data protection with a very high quality of digital infrastructure and also including an excellent international connectivity and of course a state of the art high end data centers which are very important in this um, whole concept and infrastructure. Luxembourg offers significant opportunities to companies, uh, startups and experts who base their business models on data. And so we enable new products, uh, new services and uh, business model innovation. And um, the industry experts that will follow uh, in this webinar will give you a brief introduction on how uh, or insights and how you can develop your company based on these new digital um, tools and also on, on the whole uh, ecosystem. So two messages that I would like you to uh, remember from my speech is that uh, you have all the important and necessary partners around this table uh, to do business uh, bilaterally and to invest uh, bilaterally. So I think this is a very important um, tool that you keep in hands uh, during this uh, period where we cannot travel. So I think this reaching out digitally is very important and having these partners around reachable is very useful. And the second uh, message I would like to give to you is that um, as a Chamber of Commerce, we are hosting the House of Entrepreneurship. So this is um, uh, also hosting a soft landing uh, platform for investors uh, organized in close collaboration with the uh, Ministry of the Economy and Lux Innovation. And this structure welcomes investors uh, to Luxembourg. We offer programs where we can uh, organize visits that are really tailor-made to your needs uh, so that you are able to um, meet uh, pro potential partners, that you get to know the ecosystem and that you can uh, make up your decision whether to Luxembourg is the right market for you. And um, I mean, generally speaking, uh, the Central uh, Eastern and Europe market will remain a very important trading partner for Luxembourg uh, for commercial as well as financial exchanges and um, important exports, for example, between Romania and Luxembourg at up to roughly a billion, uh, added up roughly to a billion euros last year. And when I look at Moldova, so we have almost uh, one million euro in, in uh, commercial exchanges. 
And I find these figures really impressive, but of course we can do better. And this is why we uh, organize these webinars and why we try to connect even when times are, uh, are really difficult. So um, living in a fast moving world and a fast changing world, um, we need partnerships and we would like to build uh, solid collaborations. And therefore we should keep reaching out um, using these means. And I um, really uh, embrace this opportunity and I wish uh, all of the spectators and, and participants to this webinar um, and a fruitful uh, webinar uh, in good information and the potential to also exchange afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cindy. Some uh, interesting words of opening there. And if I can just bounce off of that, I think it, it's very important for the panelists today, not just to explain what they're doing and how they're doing it, but also how they can facilitate uh, Romanian companies uh, coming into, into Luxembourg and beyond. So thank you for those opening words. I, I would like to pass over now to the ambassador of Luxembourg to Romania for some uh, opening words as well. Um, His Excellency, Mr. Paul Steinmetz. Over thank to you. you. Thank you, Mr. Foy. Um, thank you to all, especially to the Chamber of Commerce for making uh, this event possible. Uh, we would all prefer to visit uh, your beautiful country in person and have this sort of uh, seminar there. I visited many, many times and I love uh, Romania. Uh, one advantage, uh, however, of these pandemic times uh, is to be able to have the right kind of speakers available and also have a somewhat larger audience, perhaps. Uh, we very much look forward to the presentations and I'm sure I will learn uh, a lot myself. Um, regarding the economy of, of Romania, news is, is rather better. OECD forecasts 2% growth. Uh, this year, uh, the Romanian government itself in its uh, budget forecasts uh, foresees uh, twice as much, 4.3 crores. Um, and following the 6th of December elections, Romania has a new coalition government led by Prime Minister Florin Cittu. The budget has now been agreed, if I understand well, and should be passed uh, before 20th of uh, February. And with the vaccines in operation, I think 700,000 Romanians have been vaccinated already. And with the EU recovery fund, I'm sure will come out of uh, this tunnel in Romania as well as in the rest of uh, Europe. Already, the unemployment figures for Romania are quite reassuring. Traditionally, I think so, with 4.9% uh, unemployment uh, which is under the EU uh, mean value of 7.5%. So uh, we also look forward to the membership of Romania in OECD and the Eurozone, hopefully, and eventually, and also including Schengen. So there's lots of work to do, uh, and we will uh, support Romania as much as we can. I also salute especially our honorary consul, in Bucharest. I'm based in Athens, as you might know or might not know, uh, but we have a permanent presence in Bucharest. It's our honorary consul, uh, Mr. Ferrario, uh, and he's doing a great job. So don't hesitate to ask him uh, for information. Ask me directly, ask the people from the Chamber of Commerce and other organizations. We are at your disposal. Thank you and uh, have a nice seminar. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, some very interesting figures on Romania. Um, I, I, I must admit, my, my experience of Romania goes back to 1991, so uh, I'm a little bit uh, a little bit out of touch. Um, I will like now to take 20 minutes, if I may, um, just to share with you. Um, I'm just going to fire this up. Hopefully, you can all see my uh, slides there. Um, I'm going to share with you some um, information about the digital economy within Luxembourg. Um, and from there, uh, we will deep dive into some company testimonial, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go a little bit further with the strategy of Luxembourg. Um, I can't see any messages from our control center, so I'm assuming everyone can see my slides. Um, 
So just a little bit of information, first of all, um, on myself. So my name is David Foy. As uh, Cindy uh, spoke earlier, Lux Innovation is helping uh, uh, organize this, this event today. Um, so I work with Lux Innovation. I'm responsible for um, foreign direct investment for the digital economy. Um, thankfully, everything that you can put a battery in or plug in is digital. So I am able to uh, work in many verticals, be it um, um, industry 4.0, be it health tech, uh, logistics. Um, so I, it's, it's a very interesting and enriching uh, um, task that I do. I get to meet a lot of interesting people and try and explain to them what they can do in Luxembourg in order to accelerate their business and what opportunities are there. So first of all, um, just a very high overview of Luxembourg itself. Um, there's around about 625,000 inhabitants in Luxembourg today. And um, 48% of those are of foreign origin. So it's a very multicultural um, um, country. When we look at the language skills, the average Luxembourger speaks uh, over three languages. Obviously, speaking just Luxembourgish isn't going to get them very far um, outside of Luxembourg. Although it is a, an interesting language, I recently uh, received Luxembourgish uh, nationality myself, and I'm an English person here. Um, so part of that is learning the language, which shows the integration that is that is required. Um, What's interesting here, though, is that English is, is spoken quite widely in Luxembourg to the point where um, you can contract in English and even litigate in the courts. If ever there's um, legal issues, you can actually do the litigation in English as well. We said that 48% of the country is foreigners. We have around about 73, 75% of the workforce um, that are foreign origin. And this is because we have around about 200,000 people who come across the border every day. So um, frontier workers, frontaliers, as we call them, coming from Belgium, France, and Germany. So that's adding new ideas and new way of thinking to, to the economy as well. We always say that uh, innovation needs different ways of thinking. If everybody has the same culture, um, the same language, we, we, we tend to, to, to stay very stagnant. So very multi, multicultural, multilingual, um, which is a great way to, to get into to Europe itself. Just putting Luxembourg on the map, as you can see, um, we're squashed between uh, Germany, France, and Belgium, which makes it a fantastic hub for logistics, physical logistics, um, both train, plane, uh, and truck. But also, um, it's, it's a very, I would say, a hotbed for digital supply chain um, um, research and innovations because there is so many different types of, uh, of, um, of logistics uh, to be addressed from here. You can see from here some of the, the companies already who have, who have made um, Luxembourg their European headquarters. Some other companies, uh, multinationals, are in Luxembourg. They don't have headquarters here, but they, they have some form of sales uh, representation. But then we also have a lot of companies coming for... Um, research uh, and development activities as well. So you can see on here, there's some, there's some big players. Some of them are, are national, um, Knipe Communications, for example. Um, can we say ArcelorMittal is national? It came from Arbed and then joined with, uh, with Mittal. So yeah, I guess we can say that's a, that's a homegrown too. When we look at where Luxembourg has come from, back in the, the 1800s, um, the, the main economic uh, force in Luxembourg was, was purely agriculture. Um, then we went through iron and steel, again, going back to the Arcelor Mittal times, which was our bed at the time. Industrial diversification, which brought us to the financial sector, which started in, in, in the 80s. And then that really was the precursor to the digital economy that we have today. Um, many of uh, the infrastructures that we see in place today, both in data center and in telecoms, was um, a direct provocation, I can say, from the financial sector. Um, there were rules that came in place in the year 2000 uh, saying that financial institutions needed to have an offsite uh, business continuity plan or disaster recovery, which prompted the data centers to have um, um, hot desk availabilities and also um, to, to, to make this tier four data centers that we have today. 
that also boosted the the dot com i would say the second phase of the dot com with all of the gaming companies coming to luxembourg streaming companies um, anything that is dematerialized the delivery of, of digital services so we can really see that luxembourg is small but you know we have no uh, we have no um resources of our own so we're continually having to to reinvent uh, and reinvent ourselves and the economy and which is where we are today with this um diversified economy for for sustainable growth when we look at the digital transformation program of europe we can see that uh the the hot subjects here are digital skills which i think we agree is is a global uh, global issue finding the right people for the right job cybersecurity and trust which we'll dive into today artificial intelligence which really is a, a growing sector um, um, you know it started some time ago but we're, we're really getting into acceleration part of that now digital transformation um, i think arnaud from our digital innovation hub will have a few words about that and then high performance computing which we're also putting on the scene today so when we look at the luxembourg uh, data driven innovation strategy we build it on these three pillars which you can see actually um reflect the european community's uh, digital transformation strategy um the first one at the top you can see here is boosting uh, the digital infrastructure capacity so this was i touched on this briefly we can talk about the data centers we have 40% of europe's uh, commercially available tier 4 data centers um if you go back 10 15 years ago there was very little connectivity from luxembourg to the european uh, to Europe and beyond um today we have 28 uh, tier 1 national providers in 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 Luxembourg um so it's building that 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 backbone that people can come and build their services on we're very much moving towards this service driven uh, economy today i would say another one of the the, the strategic uh, positioning for digital infrastructure is the 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 project of fiber to the home which is uh, nearing its end now which is bringing fiber connectivity to every single household uh, within luxembourg when we go down uh, clockwise ensuring a strong regulatory um, environment we are very lucky today that the 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 deciders in luxembourg so the ministers uh, the government are very business savvy they understand what is required in order to to accelerate businesses and make uh, new businesses successful so we quite often see uh, regulations coming in that normally would slow down innovation that would slow down the creativity um we're very lucky here where where regulations are put in place that will actually accelerate um innovation which will provoke ways of doing things differently um inside of there we also have uh, different financing uh programs uh for for government grants for research and development um for young innovative uh companies also we have quite a a, a booming startup uh, community where there's there's many different uh, um financial um triggers that that can assist in that um going round we can see experimenting and innovating uh, of, of digital technologies i think here we we're, we're really referring to the support infrastructures um that have been set up within luxembourg again within the startup community we have many um, incubators and accelerators we have the digital innovation hub which uh, my my colleague arno will speak to you later which is um, explaining to people and helping them go through this digitalization process but also test in test environments such as um, a cross border autonomous driving test environment um, we have an autonomous um, or an autom automotive campus we try and promote luxembourg as an environment that is very friendly to come and become a living lab if you like there are many types of of different businesses uh, and as you can see different types of people in luxembourg so it it really makes this test um uh, environment very very attractive and um, when we go down into what our key sectors are today so these are very much our our priority sectors that we're looking to develop I think industry 4.0 is uh, quite an obvious one. Um we have uh, several large multinationals here in, in Luxembourg today. Um a, an example of which would be uh, Goodyear for example they have their uh, innovation European innovation hub in Luxembourg they've been here for many years. 
they're just uh, finalizing the construction of an industry 4.0 factory for the manufacturing of uh, very high-end tires. Um, we have um, Husky Injection Molding, which is a Canadian company in Luxembourg, uh, going through a digitalization process also, which is again being supported by Lux Innovation, also receiving funding from the Ministry of the Economy. And the idea behind that is once they've gone through that journey, they're generating data and they're generating experience that they can feed back into the community. Um, again, Ecotech or clean tech, as we, as we like to refer to it today, covers everything from autonomous driving, um, smart cities, um, everything that might be uh, green aware also. Health tech really is becoming quite a, quite a hot subject today, obviously with the, the pandemic. And there are many different companies coming into Luxembourg, um, joining forces with existing companies and research uh, institutions here um, and, and building on that. Logistics, we, we spoke about very briefly at the beginning. Um, and obviously financial services is, is a big uh, part of the GDP in, in Luxembourg and uh, the fintech community both in startup and established companies is, is, very, is very booming. Um, space, I'm sure everybody's seen what's happening in, in space research uh, with the Luxembourg Space Agency and, uh, and um, space resources, so space mining. Um, there's a lot of technological advance going on there. And uh, every day we're seeing new companies arriving in Luxembourg, both, I would say, from se space security, so cybersecurity for the tele telecommunications, but also landing vehicles, uh, mining vehicles, every kind of space-related technology you can think of. And then where we are today, again, going back, you know, if you can put a battery in it or plug it in, ICT in the center, which links all of these uh, priority sectors. Um, so today, a lot of these sectors are open. There are ongoing um, projects happening. Um, we would like to invite you to, to, to look a little bit further into each one of these and see if there's... there's uh, ways of doing business or partnering up. Um, some of the, the key points, I would say, of the, the focus of the government rather than priority sectors, the first one being the, the Euro HPC uh, program. So this is a building of a, a supercomputer in Luxembourg, which should come online uh, sometime in May. There is a call out today for demonstrators. Um, if you have a look at uh, Lux Provide website, you'll be able to see that they're looking for uh, uh, demonstration projects to load onto to the, uh, the HPC project. Um, and this will become part of a high performance or a supercomputer node, um, which will be a European node with each European state or hopefully one day each European state having, a, having their own instance. Obviously, with all of this HPC and data-driven uh, Issue or projects that we have, cybersecurity is a very large, uh, large uh, priority of us as well here. And we'll have uh, Mr. Francois Till from the, the, the Ministry of the Economy explaining that in a little bit more detail. So I, I won't go into that today. Um, artificial intelligence, uh, a couple of years back, uh, this was two years ago now, we launched the Artificial Intelligence Research Laboratory. So this is a, a joint venture between the University of Luxembourg and NVIDIA. So this is their first European um, research uh, institution uh, for, for artificial intelligence. And the university is using this for, auto, uh, for autonomous driving. And again, for, for a lot of space related um, uh, projects. Um, I'll keep the support of institutions, research institutions for the next slide and also the, the incubators uh, uh, and the startup environment afterwards. So again, uh, Digital Innovation Hub, uh, Arnaud will cover that. But again, this is, this is explaining how we are interlinking across Europe to share resources, to share experiences, to find uh, the right technologies, the right people at the right time. Um, and again, we've, we've already touched on the government grants. So for, for research uh, collabor collaboration, um, we have many different uh, institutions today. The SNT, which is the Interdisciplinary uh, Center for Security and Trust, um, you can see at the top uh, left-hand side, is very focused um, digital, so cybersecurity, fintech, IoT. Um, so that is the research arm of the Luxembourg University. But then you can also see that we have the Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology, 
which I would say is more materials or, uh, oriented. Um, they just recently uh, announced uh, a project to find uh, new compounds that are lighter compounds for, for just for, for space exploration to, to make uh, space vehicles much lighter. And then diagonally, you can see we also have uh, bio research uh, institutions as well. To add to this, um, again, the Luxembourg Digital Innovation Hub, Security Made in LU, which is our national uh, cybersecurity uh, center. Lux Provide, which is the high performance computing or supercomputing uh, company um, that is uh, commercializing that today. Something interesting here, the Gov Tech Lab. So this is a, a laboratory that has recently opened um, with the ambition of making um, e-government, so digitalizing government services. Again, if you look on the website of the Gov Tech Lab, you'll see that they're doing uh, calls for, for tender for different projects. I believe one of them is a, is a, a botnet, um, anti-botnet uh, solution at the moment. And at the end, ESRIC, which is the European Space Agency um, Innovation uh, Center, which is held in Luxembourg. To make, it seems very complicated, but to make all of this much easier, um, you can find it all under Research Luxembourg. So this is a, a new initiative uh, to, to make an umbrella um, organization, which all of these research institutions are part of today. Um, this beautiful picture that you can see here, just incidentally, in the center is the old uh, blast furnaces from Arbed, um, which is the, the, the steel producing uh, center of, of, or was the steel producing center of Luxembourg. So this has come from, the economic steel center of Luxembourg to the research center. The little square building you can see in the middle at the bottom is where uh, the Lux Innovation and the Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology are housed today. Very quickly on the startup, system, uh, startup ecosystem. Um, again, if you go back uh, six, seven years, this would have been quite an empty slide, but you can see on the left-hand side, the different incubators and accelerators that we have today, each one providing its own support its own flavor. Um, the Loft, for example, Luxembourg House of Financial Technologies. Um, you have uh, Tomorrow Street, which is the Vodafone uh, um, incubator and various different uh, others that you see there also. On the right-hand side, you can see some of the publications that we make in Luxembourg that address the startup community and some of the events at the bottom. Um, obviously they're all digital today, but uh, ICT Spring, for example, is our flagship. Um, the Arch Summit is very much uh, startup uh, oriented, but uh, all of them very interesting to look at and you can find a lot of information online. Um, very briefly on one of our startup uh, programs within Fit for Start. Um, so we have two, um, two uh, sessions of this per year where we invite startups to apply to be part of this Fit for Start program. If you're successful, um, you'll receive three months of mentoring and coaching and up to 150,000 euro in equity free funding if you, uh, if you manage to, to, to graduate at the end of it. Again, my last slide, just to show you the, the, the diversity of our startup system, our startup ecosystem today, everything from space to creative industries through mobility, logistics, FinTech, um, don't try and look at the, 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 the logos here. I realize it's very small, but the idea is just to demonstrate the, uh, the diversity of the ecosystem. So with that, I hope I have given you uh, an overview of the digital uh, possibilities within Luxembourg. Again, as uh, Cindy said, uh, we work very close with the House of Entrepreneurship to provide information to help companies enter Luxembourg, um, either directly or through the soft landing program. So if you have any um, questions whatsoever, please get in touch with me, david.foy at luxinnovation.lu. And I would be very, very happy to, uh, to help you navigate that. So that was my uh, little pitch on Luxembourg and the digital uh, strategy that we, we have here. So for the next, uh, the next speaker, we have Mr. Casius Moria, who is the CEO of emailtree.ai. Uh, which is an intelligent email management solution based on artificial intelligence. Um, so a cost, uh, company testimonial from Luxembourg. Cassius. Thank you, David. You're welcome.
Thank you, David. Hello, everyone. Do you, do you see my screen? I certainly do. You might want to put it into full. There we go. That's perfect. That's good. OK, great. Thank you. Well, first of all, thanks again for uh, for the invitation and ha having the opportunities to speak about the model that we are uh, using to uh, to collaborate uh, and to to bring together uh, Luxembourg and, and Romania into uh, in the, into the group of companies that uh, I, I, I founded um, some years ago. Uh, let me give you a, a little bit of history uh, before that. So uh, in 1998, I founded the first company in in Sibiu, uh, Romania. At uh, that time, uh, pre working on software for uh, bank industry. Then, uh, since I um, I was studying uh, business law in in south of France, Saxon Provence, I founded uh, another company there on the e-commerce area in 2003. And then, together with uh, the family, uh, we moved in Luxembourg in 2007. Uh, and uh, uh, 2008, uh, I, I founded the first company in, in Luxembourg. And I, I must say that uh, it was the real moment when we, we take off, we took off, because um, the, the business environment is it's very friendly. Uh, I remember that I was uh, to some uh, uh, meeting and there was uh, Mr. Kreke, uh, a former uh, economy uh, ministry, and he said, uh, Remember, uh, at the ministry, uh, uh, we are here to help companies uh, to, to develop. If you have a question or if you had, uh, if you need help, just knock on the door, and uh, somebody will help. And I was, I must say that I was surprised by by this mindset, uh, being so close and having the decisional um, path so easy to to reach somebody uh, with such a uh, uh, capability to take decisions and help companies. So I, I started to see myself in, in and to, to develop this uh, this group um, in a very business uh, in, uh, friendly environment. Then, um, so this first e-commerce group of companies, uh, we, uh, um, we we had there uh, uh, thousands of emails. And uh, in 2015, I said to the team, let's find a way to automate uh, those emails uh, by introducing uh, in artificial intelligence and automation. And uh, we started to develop in 2017 this solution. Now, the, the interesting point uh, of all this is that um, the way we work is al always based on a mix uh, between the teams that we have in Romania, in Luxembourg, uh, meaning that our R&D center, uh, the main one, is located in, in Romania. Uh, it's easy for us uh, to find um, uh, skills there, uh, developers, seniors and, uh, in artificial intelligence or uh, PHP or other type of uh, skills of Python. And in Luxembourg, we have uh, marketing and sales, which is the visible part of the iceberg, I would say. I always worked like this. Uh, since 1998 and then 2003, uh, and uh, I found that the way that we mixed this uh, the skills into the two countries, two locations, and mixing the the business environments, it was uh, a good um, compromise for me. I mean, compromise. When I if I say the word compromise, it's it's also a little bit negative, but it's compromise on the top, going to the top because. Uh, we take all the best on all sides uh, and we bring together the, the people on, in those two countries and then we, uh, we go ahead with a full speed ahead. Um, so in 2017, we started to develop Emetry AI, which is an end-to-end -end customer contact service uh, automation meaning that uh, when an email arrives uh, or a text request arrives, we, um, we try to solve it as uh, fastest as possible uh, by using a, a natural language processing, machine learning, uh, robotic process automation. And as I said, it's all about the team and uh, uh, having the skills at the right place, combining those skills. So in Luxembourg, we are uh, the, the marketing, the sales, uh, like uh, my co-founder, Xavier Buc, which uh, uh, 
the Luxembourgish um, uh, the team uh, and uh, participants to this webinar uh, know him very well. And uh, um, now we have um, investors and, and, co and advisors from UiPath, which is a leader, uh, a worldwide leader in robotic process automation. So together with them, uh, we are building the sales and the marketing team here. We have also, uh, we are starting to build also our uh, second R&D uh, center together, for example, with Theodor, uh, who moved from Bucharest to Luxembourg uh, at the beginning of this year. And this is also a very interesting idea uh, to, to use when a company in Romania wants to start a business and to, uh, to um, develop then in, in Luxembourg. Uh, we proposed basically to everybody in the team and we said, if you consider that at some point in time, uh, you will, would like to, to move in Luxembourg, uh, we can do it internally in our group. And then we facilitate everything which is possible to, for that. So some of the team members maybe one day will move in Luxembourg, others will remain in Romania. But in any case, this mix works perfectly for us. This is our R&D team and um, also uh, customer service team based in Romania in different countries, in different uh, uh, cities like Sibiu, Timisoara, Bucharest, uh, Pitești, Iași. So in many places. So I count on them every day at nine o'clock in the morning. We have this uh, stand up uh, every day and we see each other uh, we, uh, to see what's what was done, what will be done tomorrow. Um, so we miss each other because we did not see uh, us uh, together for quite a moment, but it's going to, to uh, we are going to do it soon, uh, hopefully. And uh, this happened uh that uh, now in 2018 2019 we went in production with this solution uh which uh, as you see is a real end-to-end -end customer service automation meaning that when any type of requests uh, text requesting coming this goes into a dispatcher we get the intents the sentiment so this is the, we do an action prediction and then this can be executed by the uh, human agent or by the robots with one of those uh, RPA tools. And once this is done, uh, this goes into the reply generator and out to the to the customer. W we call this in, in the situation when we when we have a hundred percent automation. We call this hyper automation, which is uh, number trend number one in Gartner's list. So uh, since two thousand eighteen, when we went in production. I must say that the success of this uh, uh, this, this new group of companies, Imetry, is based also on the network that we uh, uh, we managed to create uh, while leveraging the uh, the yes the network between Luxembourg and, and Romania. Uh, myself, I'm not very comfortable speaking in public or giving pitches on so on so on. But since I, I, I joined uh, Razvan at uh, Romlux, um, well, he pushed me in a way to, to speak about the companies that I run, to, to speak about the models that we use, how we combine uh, the, um, the benefits from the two countries. And uh, um, coming from there, I met a lot of people uh, in Luxembourg and, and Romania, uh, talked to a lot of uh, uh, entrepreneurs and startups willing to, to come uh, uh, in Luxembourg. And I, I get more and more courageous. So I, I would say uh, that uh, it helped a lot to go public in a way. And uh, since 2018, uh, now we have this uh, uh, this uh, uh, production to, to leaders like Orange or WebHelp or uh, IDF. And uh, this means that uh, uh, now we are going to scale. Uh, scaling means for us uh, um, using uh, hundreds of uh, agents that are using uh, Imetry AI, um, developing uh, more and more the R&D teams. We opened also Imetry AI in Paris two months ago, also because we want to get close to the uh, people who are in those regions. So uh, we uh, we already have a machine learning engineer in Paris uh, at uh, Credit Agricole, village by Credit Agricole. So I think that Europe, for me, 
Uh, as I, I said yesterday to uh, to uh, one of uh, in, uh, the persons I talked to, I talk a lot about uh, what could be Europe. Um, Europe for me, uh, I I would love to uh, to be able to hire somebody. Uh, doesn't matter the uh, the country where he lives in Europe. Uh, pay the taxes. Uh, well doesn't really matter how lev uh, the level of the taxes but pay the taxes into a unique place just like we are doing with the VAT and then uh, spread the taxes between the uh, between the different countries but myself if the, that employee wants to stay in Croatia and Romania and Greece whatever he wants to or she um, he can stay there and work from there I, I see the Europe like this I'm trying to build it at a very low level, and if it's possible for me to to bring some help to the uh, Romanian entrepreneurs that want to uh, to come to Luxembourg and uh, to help them, uh, uh, that will be uh, with great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Cassius. That was a very very interesting. Uh overview of what you're doing. Can I, can I just ask you one question, if I may? Um, and while we're here, can I also um, just again say to our people, uh, the participants of this, this, uh, this webinar, please ask your questions on the Q&A. Um, we'll, we'll get through to them as, as we go through. Um, just one question for you, Cassius. You've got a very decentralized team. Um, yes. You have people all over the place. Is, do you think it's more of a, a management um, opportunity to keep it like a tight working team, or do you have to find the right the right mindset of the people? Obviously, if you're if you're hiring very intelligent, very high end people, um, they have a certain work ethic, a certain work discipline. But is is it difficult coordinating all of those people? Uh, you just say it. It's uh, ethic and discipline. And uh, uh, being able to to organize organize uh, each one of us and to uh, to deliver the work that we are expecting as a team, as a target overall, I think that that's the, the that's the most important. Um, well, of course, the, the management is here to uh, to remind that we have targets, uh, objectives to reach, but on the other side. Uh, I think that we are a hundred percent trustful in the in the way that each one of us is organizes himself or herself to deliver the, uh, the the work, even if we are very distributed in different corners of of, uh, of the countries uh, Europe. So I would say that um, you you have to have also a very uh, like we, we are doing every morning nine o'clock. We have this. Uh, stand up we meet each other uh two weeks ago we had uh, a very uh, important milestone going with the extension in chrome i, I opened a champagne uh, there was a surprise for the whole team i mean yes we miss each other physically uh, but we do manage to organize ourselves and i think that uh, once you uh, um, it's a it's a win-win situation because uh, they say uh, working on email tree solution is so exciting as a solution. On the other side, uh, being able to attract those uh, very um, high skilled brains is important for us, no matter the place where they, they are. And again, I would love to be able to hire people everywhere in, in Europe easily. Uh, I think that's, uh, th that's the way that we are doing it. Thank you very much. It's a perfect you, example, I think, uh, and I wish you great success in that. I think it's also, uh, uh, I, I think it's one of the, 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 I would say one of the stronger points of Luxembourg for attracting talent is the, the, the amount of uh, projects and the amount of uh, the, the potential of, of joining these, these very good uh, um, projects that are going on. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we're going to pass over now to Mr. Arno Lambert, who is the director of the Luxembourg Digital Innovation Hub um, in Lux Innovation. Arno, over to you, sir. Good morning, everybody, and, and thank you for all the remaining, basically, uh, audience for learning more about the opportunities that Luxembourg can bring to their, to their business. 
Um, let me share my screen and introduce you to uh, to uh, the what we have as the uh, digital innovation hub. So hopefully now you can see my screen. Um, thank you everybody for uh, for hosting me here. So as part of the national strategy of the data driven innovation, there is one instrument called the digital innovation hub. And it's not unique because it's actually part of a European strategy also, um, in which uh, all countries in Europe are invited basically to have those digital innovation hubs. So you clearly have several ones in Romania. I mean, you have actually for the moment 12 being listed for, uh, for uh, actually uh, for, for being candidates and, and the country will need to choose one of them. Um, but basically, the purpose of a digital innovation hub is really to accelerate the digital innovation for industrial SMEs uh, to start with. Um, but it really takes the full potential of this industrial revolution for zero. Um, and also, of course, for the companies, that's one. And the other part is also to uh, unlock the potential of new technologies, not only nationally, but also across Europe. So, actually, uh, what we would say the uh, the, the real uh, the real uh, hub aspect is going into is actually the one stop shop um, where you can uh, actually will go and distribute and connect all the expertise. Um, in this case, what you see here, the hub act is actually the key function is the hubbing aspect. It's putting in relation companies investors, government, incubators, um, research institutions around digitalization, the data economy. So typically, once you as a company uh, will have the pleasure to uh, launch and establish yourself in Luxembourg, you will have direct access to the digital innovation hub also, which will help you in your accelerating your innovations from a digital point of view by putting yourself in relation with a whole set of suppliers that are active in that field. So you don't need to shop around. So we will bring you and help you and help the relation between your company and all the providers that are established in Luxembourg. And also any potential government aids, be national or European, that can also support your innovation side and also any research that could be linked to that, which once you get into very specific themes, can help you to accelerate basically uh, your innovation in that domain. Moving to the, the, the next slide, the focus on the, uh, of, of uh, EDH is also about collaboration. And um, it means that on the collaboration side, as you can see on the map there, you can see uh, Luxembourg, but then you see a lot of numbers across, and those are all candidates for European digital innovation. In a sense that innovation and digital is definitely European affair, it's a European strategy. And here you can see on the right hand side that in Romania, you have for the moment, uh, what you can see here, 12 candidates for digital innovation help. So, what does it mean? At the European level, the purpose is also the linking of those competences uh, on, on at the European level. Meaning, if you are a company in Romania and you want to have access to a competence that you can't find in Romania, your digital local digital innovation hub will uh, will connect into the other digital innovation hubs in Europe to potentially find that element. Vice versa, being in Luxembourg, I have a Luxembourgish company, you're established in Luxembourg, I can't find that skills in Luxembourg, I will reach out to my counterpart in Europe, including Romania, to see what skills they have over there that can actually fit the needs. So it's about offer and demand, it's about, on one hand side, it's making sure that from a national point of view, you can find what you can't find locally, you can have access to at your open level. And on the other side, if you, are, you have a specific expertise in your own country, you can expose it to the rest of Europe. Moving on, 
uh, where we actually going to for the Luxembourgish one, uh, the focus is, um, and you have control, so uh, please continue. Yeah, thank you. The focus for Luxembourg is on the manufacturing side. So the, we choose as a field, you could have, um, the one where we have the most potential in Luxembourg is accelerating digitalization in the manufacturing SME segment. That's where the focus is, and that's why we will are we're looking at helping every company. So should you be in the manufacturing side and establishing in Luxembourg, you will have our full attention to help you to bring your digitalization to the next level. Vice versa, we also focus on certain expertise. I think David mentioned some of the HPC one, the cybersecurity and AI. I mean, we just had an interesting presentation on, on a specific AI application. This is the focus of the expertise that we have in Luxembourg and that we will be promoting also at European level. Moving to the next one. Lux Innovation, uh, the Digital Innovation Hub is actually hosted with Lux Innovation, so the national agency for innovation um, at a different level, not only digital, but the primary focus in this case is digital. And it's also collaboration with different partners, the Federation of uh, the Industry of Luxembourg, the FEDIL, the Chamber of Commerce, that is actually organizing this event also today. And those are actually helping and bringing um, the, the, the digital innovation hub in close contact with all the companies. And helping also to have access to specific expertise or test before you can invest. Uh, we have different partners. You have the University of Luxembourg, this part of, of Digital Innovation Hub. We have the LIST, the Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology, and also the FNR, the Fonds National de la Recherche, for everything which is about funding basic innovation around the digital side. Moving on, um, the Digital Innovation Hub is also part of a whole network of, uh, of other Digital Innovation Hub. Um, DHNet, did EU, and DH World, both of them ahead of being part of shaping the European digital innovation hubs, is actually making uh, the steps to making sure we link and connect all that savoir-faire and bring it to your disposal for uh, your acceleration in uh, the digital transformation. So in a nutshell, if I want to summarize from, uh, from my side, I think uh, once as uh, you have basically the, the close link already, uh, an established link between Romania and Luxembourg from a business point of view, and I had the pleasure to work, already work with Romania in the past. Um, <clears throat> meaning you as an investor, if you want, uh, for all the reasons that David and my, the other speakers presented established in Luxembourg, you will have direct access also to the Digital Innovation Hub to help you in your innovation projects from uh, trans digital transformation with not only accessing to local actors with a one-stop shop, the local investors, but, uh, also national funds, European funds, research, but also linking, if there is any opportunity, linking you to any other expertise in Europe, if should you need specific expertise and vice versa, if you have a specific technology or savoir-faire that what you want to have exposed to Europe, the European Digital uh, Luxembourg Digital Innovation Hub is part, will be part of the European network and will be able to promote also your server affair into the rest of Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Arnaud. That was uh, quite a, a comprehensive overview of, uh, of what you're doing there. Um, I, I just have one question for you, maybe, because everybody's a little bit timid on the Q&A today, so I'm going to just make them up as I go along because um, we have a couple of minutes before we get on to the next one. Um, if people want to come and work or want an interaction with the, the Digital Innovation Hub, what would you say are the prerequisites um, in order to receive assistance or receive uh, an interaction with yourself? I mean, the typical focus from our side is, is about to be in the industry sector and, and to be an SME. So that would be the primary I would say focus we have. Of, of course, we, we, we still continue to help others, but that's the primary focus. So normally the entry door from that point of view, um, or it's the chambers as we have seen, the Federation of Industry of Luxembourg or, or the Chamber of Commerce or one of the clusters of Lux Innovation. Um, you have different entry points. You can have an entry point from a professional point of view, meaning your focus area, 
and that would be through the different clusters that you have in Luxembourg that folks focus also with their domain expertise in your own business. Um, and if that's not the case and you know, you don't know, you will just reach, reach out to Lux Innovation, which is actually a very good entry door. It will naturally come to us, one of us, being uh, through David's team or anybody else in Lux Innovation or directly to, to Digital Innovation Hub. Uh, my recommendation normally, it starts from a business project. So I would always recommend you to link with your clusters. I mean, the clusters are being group of, I would say, uh, structure that really focus on your industry, your specific sector, and therefore have also the expertise to guide you from a business and from a digital point of view, and we will be embarked from a digital point of view. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Arno. That was, uh, that was very interesting. I've just seen that uh, Vincenzo has come online, Vincenzo Manzella, who is um, going to have a, a little surprise for us later on. But uh, unfortunately, you have to stay uh, with us. Well, fortunately, you have to stay with us until the end of this, uh, this seminar to see what that little surprise is. Maybe there's a clue in, in, in the background behind Vincenzo. Um, I would like now to introduce uh, Francois. So Monsieur Francois Till, who is the Director of Cybersecurity and Digital Technologies at the Luxembourg Ministry of Economy, um, I think, I have rarely seen someone as, as passionate about what they do as Francois. So uh, hold on to your seats and uh, Francois, <laughs> over to you, sir. Thank you, David. <laughs> thank you, David. And uh, thank you, Cassius, because uh, what Cassius has been talking about is actually what we are living here. I work for the Ministry of Economy. I'm Director of Cybersecurity and Digital Technologies. And since 20 years, I'm uh, working in the area of, of uh, cybersecurity. Luxembourg actually started quite early in, uh, in cybersecurity. It was uh, shortly after I Love You Virus. Some of you might still, still know what I'm talking about. So what I, I gonna do is uh, talk about the ecosystem, our ecosystem, cybersecurity, the roadmap, which is closely linked to uh, to your European roadmap, but with some something special skills of Luxembourg in mind, and uh, actually the projects we are working in. For us, the ecosystem is extremely important because we strongly believe in since 20 years that the most important thing of cybersecurity is that this is a strong factor of attractiveness for an economy. So we approach cybersecurity as a business, meaning that cybersecurity is an essential service that everybody needs, more and more needs. But of course, cybersecurity is uh, quite discriminatory in terms of cost and complexity. So for us, it is highly collaborative. And when saying collaborative, I mean, between the public sector, within the public sector, and the private sector. So what we really do in Luxembourg is that we strongly col col collaborate sorry, uh, in cybersecurity on the operational and on a strategic level. We are now issuing, in a few months' time, our fourth strategy, and it's uh, a modern strategy uh, where you can, can see how the private sector and the public sector are collaborating in order uh, to make something um, or to achieve a very important goal for us, which is digital trust. Because we are in a service-oriented uh, economy, we are very renowned for our trusts from the, from the financial sector, from other sectors. And that is uh, one of the things we really like to keep very high on our agenda. And that is why we strongly work together on this, on this ecosystem. The Ministry of Economy plays a very important role in this because the uh, Ministry of Economy was the first ministry to start working in cybersecurity. And so we get a very business-friendly and um, in, an, um, inclusive way of doing cybersecurity. The ecosystem is growing, is uh, slowly growing, but what is very, very interesting is that actually that 50% of the uh, of the uh, companies in cybersecurity working solely in cybersecurity came in the last five years, so we are in cybersecurity. We are really quickly uh, getting adults and uh, working closely together. 
What is interesting is also that in uh, in cybersecurity in Luxembourg we have ten computer emergency response teams, four government owned and uh, six private ones, uh, and this shows actually the uh, state of maturity of the Luxembourg uh, cybersecurity ecosystem because we are really a service oriented uh, economy, and also computer emergency response teams are acting in this respect. Uh, centers or the, the, um, the services our, our economy, our ecosystem provides to, to our economy are very diverse and growing actually with the needs that are coming up. The needs, well, they are very, very closely related to the, uh, to the EU, EU um, plan of action, meaning that in the, uh, in the upper, upper scale, you see that uh, the governance which is evolving in cybersecurity in Europe is uh, doing really a good job because we can implement trusts because of IDAS, then uh, the e-signature, e then GDPR because of trust and privacy, cyber insurance. We are working on this very heavily because we see there's an enormous opportunity of of working together with cyber insurance, then open data and public sector information, the Cyber Act certification, where the first, um, first uh, certificate has come out for cloud, then platform regulation, and which is interesting for us, most is the uh, Data Governance Act and the GAIA-X activities within the, uh, within the European Commission. You will probably know that GAIA-X is an initiative of a federated cloud, meaning that a um, cloud in Europe should become interoperable, should allow the um, then, then, um, in, sorry, it should allow people to move freely between clouds, move the data. It's completely against vendor lock-in. And of course, we are very interested in et 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 ethics in AI and in cybersecurity. From the infrastructure point of view, we are really very strong because we very early started implementing a very strong connectivity to all our neighbors. We have a very strong local loop, which plays, plays in, uh, in a growing importance, especially because of our, uh, digit, uh, our distributed denial of service infrastructure. We are very proud of our Luxstars PKI, meaning we are capable of, uh, we have one company that is uh, providing uh, qualified certificates and they are used by every citizen in the country. It's starting to get an, uh, a very great success also in export. This technology, ADAS technology, digital signature is one of the most important things we need in our trust economy. And also for GAIA-X, it will play a major role. Those who are working in uh, cybersecurity might also know the platform MISP, malware information sharing platform. Luxembourg was actually the first country that uh, invested a lot of uh, efforts and money in a completely free platform where companies can share threat intel amongst themselves in order to help protect themselves. That is uh, just to show you that we take collaboration seriously because we implement the infrastructure infrastructures that are needed to collaborate it, like, like MISP, or next year or this year, we will um, publish RISP, this is a platform where you can exchange risk scenarios. Governance and risk scenarios is for us in a very important field to work in because we strongly believe in a better governance, meaning that uh, regulators should coordinate themselves on risk scenarios that should be used in order to reuse in order to reduce the uh, cost of com compliance. Last year, our anti na national anti DDoS um, infrastructure uh, got online. And as David said, this year, our HPC, high performance computer, will also go, go online. There's a very a big uh, specificity with this HPC. It's accessible for private companies, which is quite uh, rare in Europe because most of the HPC capabilities are reserved for research. What we are also working in, that is uh, what uh, Cindy Teraba, Teraba talked about in the beginning, meaning we are pr preparing our data-driven economy. And so we are uh, putting in place a data exchange platform, meaning that we will provide an infrastructure, a trusted infrastructure, 
a certified infrastructure that can can help people get access to data they would not get uh, in a normal situation. This will uh, we will need to implement good data governance, implement high security, but we are uh, firmly uh, decided to, to do this. And of course, as soon as the technical specifications are ready, we will implement a GaiaX node, meaning we will get access to the whole GaiaX, also GaiaX cloud infrastructure in Europe. This is a very important step for us because we will be able to provide services from Luxembourg within the Gaia Gaia X network wherever and can instantiate our services wherever in a, a, a Gaia X compatible cloud is. And um, this year, next year, we will also finish our broadband strategy to, to and have implemented our 5G network. On the area of competencies, well, in cybersecurity, we have a very traditional strength in cryptology. That is one of the priorities, that was one of the priorities when the university was started, because we still think that cryptology is one of the main competences you have must have in order to implement cybersecurity protocols. We are very good in collaborative risk management, meaning sharing risk scenarios, risk metrics, in order to improve the quality of risk management done within Luxembourg companies. We would not only like to reduce cost of compliance, but also a quality of risk management. Threat intel and forensics are topics we are working very uh, strongly on because it's the daily work of certs and of SOCs. And this is a competence we are always looking for, for anywhere in the world who would like to collaborate or build services upon the data we can provide. And of course, the, uh, the creation, enlargement of our ecosystem and our exchange platform. For instance, our ecosystem is meeting every, every month on a specific to topic. There's an exchange between experts. And as uh, Luxembourg is not such, uh, such big, it's really possible to know everybody active in this ecosystem. This gives us speed. This gives the Ministry of the Economy the possibility to oversee the ecosystem, to learn its needs and problems, and to help them to, to solve this very quickly. And the main goal in cybersecurity is to implement trust and a very good way of doing governance in cybersecurity. Because for the moment, governance in cybersecurity is normally uh, uh, rather, rather poor in Europe. As I said, we are building a coherent, coherent ecosystem uh, for as a, also for SMEs by providing infrastructure, governance, services, and skills. And especially for services and skills, Romania is very renowned in cybersecurity. The infrastructure we are currently ran, ramping up, HPC, accessible for the private in industry, as I said, our data exchange platform with state-of-the-art data governance and high security services. We are also specializing in providing access to personal data by providing pseudonymization and anonymization technologies. And of course, we have implemented special cybersecurity services as our national data infrastructure. And we are deploying uh, aggressively sensors within Luxembourg in order to have a very good early warning system. We're the first, we are working on the introduction of a European data space in cybersecurity, meaning we would like people to exchange information in cybersecurity because only by this we can get proactive and get a better, better service uh, in cybersecurity. Everybody will be free to join and share, sell, buy uh, data in cybersecurity. We have made a uh, legal, uh, legal um, analysis about sharing data and uh, on the basis of the, of the legitimate interest given by the GDPR, we can really exchange data with uh, partners who need this in, in order to implement a better security for themselves. And of course, GAIX nodes, we will build them in order to provide services from our ecosystem within the European Federated Cloud. This is for us one of the most important strategic projects 
because we can sell our trust, we can sell our competencies via Luxembourg to Europe. The topics we are working on, IDAS is still a very important to topic because it provides trust, trust services in Europe, like electronic signatures, authentication, and uh, we shortly introduced a signature platform during COVID times so that people can implement simpler and more easily uh, um, uh, uh, workflows. Cybersecurity Act, we will provide certification on the level of basic and substantial trust uh, level. And of course, uh, we are working since 10 years in threat intel, threat sharing, in order to implement risk management, better governance, and insurance tech. Insurance tech, for me, is still an extreme big business opportunity in Luxembourg. And last but not least, cloud. Uh, we are preparing ourselves for the deployment of CAIX. We need, we must develop competencies in cloud security and especially in cloud incident response capabilities, because these are the services that we would like to provide with also within GAIA-X. GDPR, pseudonymization, anonymization, I talked about this, it, data governance and semantic interoperability with the help of taxonomies, that are all aspects we are working on, especially on our data space cybersecurity. Proof of trustworthiness, encryption, and transport capabilities, which are huge in Luxembourg because we have tremendous big broadband uh, within Luxembourg and also uh, to all our neighboring countries and then big internet exchange nodes in Europe. And as we are a small country, everything is SME enabled. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francois. That was uh, uh, quite a comprehensive uh, overview of cybersecurity. I mean, the, 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 the roadmap that you showed on slide five I mean, that, that must take an awful lot of resources to get that going. Um, let me just have a look at the Q&As because we are, we are very spot on time. So congratulations to all the speakers today. Um, we Actually, we have a question for you, Francois, if you would be so kind. Uh, at Francois Till, would you kindly expose what are the ethic works you referred to? Well, the ethic works is um, is a work on the topic of what is ethically okay doing in cybersecurity. For instance, mass surveillance in order to implement cybersecurity is, in my opinion, not the right way. So uh, we take into account ethical consideration, considerations, um, not only legal ones, in order to implement uh, cybersecurity services, because it is for us extremely important to stay a trusted partner. If we would not pay attention to ethics, we would lose this trust and our business cases would be gone. The same is for AI. You should not actually do everything that is possible, but you should do the things that uh, are okay with our reputation and that are needed and trustworthy in Europe. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering how, how ethical, you know, how we could apply it over and above sort of a legal framework and actually see on the ground how commercial companies are, are implementing ethical cybersecurity, ethical uh, artificial intelligence. I know it's, it's a big question in, in some areas, specifically in, in developing areas like autonomous driving, for example, how can you make a, a something that is AI consciously aware of a decision it's about to take that could be life-changing for other people as well? I, I, I just could uh, give a very short reply on this because not in autonomous driving, but in cybersecurity. I think the uh, services we are providing in Europe are really paying respect to GDPR, to our way of living. And uh, some countries, especially in uh, not on our continent, sometimes uh, tend to implement massive uh, surveillance in order to implement security. That is not the European way. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Francois. And um, we have another question in here. Thank you for such opportunities. If it's possible to send the contact info of speakers, which we can share in Republic of Moldova, um, I will ask Stephen to take care of that. Stephen, who's in the background here somewhere from the Chamber of Commerce, um, if you could share the contacts of everybody. 
Um, another question that we have here, has Lux Innovation or any entity in Luxembourg's digital ecosystem got an interest in education? What has been the work? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, I think innovation in education is, is, is a very important uh, cornerstone, I would say, of the Ministry of Education today, uh, to a point where the, there is actually um, an entity being created called Script, um, script.lu, I can send it in the chat if you like, uh, which is um, an institution that's been set up exactly for that, to research any new innovations or any ways that uh, technology can be applied to facilitate uh, education. Um, and I think specifically in, in the way that uh, most of the, the children are, are having to work from, uh, from home and do uh, remote uh, lessons at the moment, it's, it's a very high on, on the agenda of the, the Ministry of the Economy. If you have anything specific that you'd like to discuss on that, then you know, please reach out to me and uh, I would be more than happy to, uh, to try and connect you to them. I've just sent the link now to, to, to the script on the chat. Um, let me just check. I think that's as far as we've got on questions. Okay, so our next uh, presentation will be Mr. Alain Schutz, who will join us via a video, a pre-recorded video. Uh, Alain is the executive director of the Belgian Luxembourg, Romania, Moldova Chamber of Commerce. Hello, everyone. My name is Alain Schotz, and I am the executive director of the Belgian Luxembourg, Romanian, Moldovan Chamber of Commerce. We would be happy to support your expansion initiative in any of the countries we represent. BIROC is a platform for services and business resources that meet your needs, analyzing the local business environment, establish your operations and grow your business. By becoming our member, you always have the opportunity to connect with your peers through our various events, webinars, seminars, workshops, gatherings and company visits. Our main goal is to create a network of business people and to connect with other business associations and Chamber of Commerce in the region. Join our community and be part of one of the most dynamic business community. Perfect. Thank you, uh, Anna. Um, I just wanted to jump across quickly uh, before we go to Razvan. We just had a question in that's, that's kind of interesting for Arnaud. Uh, Arnaud Lambert, which, uh, which industries, industrial branches uh, are the most represented within the SMEs that the hub is supporting actually? Um, also, what is the view on some of the traditional industries like food production and processing or others? I think we have, I mean, in the country, we have a quite wide range, but I would say it's mainly uh, industrial production in this case that we have as a, an SME industry uh, where we, we have the, the closest contact. So it's not necessarily in the food aspect, or more than on food. Um, and again, it's more, it's probably also how uh, the, 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 the different clusters are organized, etc. We have more structure, I would say, approach to, to those ones. Um, and it's also linked to uh, what companies are representative representing Luxembourg and we have from the ratio we have more non-food production than we have food production if you want to take that okay thank you so much so um, our next uh, speaker is uh, Mr. Razvan, Razvan Petru Radu who is the president of Romania Luxembourg Business Forum a non-profit organization aimed to reinforce links between Romania and Luxembourg by promoting diplomatic, economic, scientific, and cultural exchanges between the two countries. Razvan. 
Very challenging. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, David. But uh, of course, Romlux is an ONG we were founded in 2007, big year for Romania, Luxembourg, Cebu, cultural capital. Uh, but above all, Romlux, I think it's uh, it's about people. It's it's a lot of very enthusiastic people who love Romania and and Romania who who love Luxembourg. Uh, and uh, they, they, they all try to, to bridge countries, businesses, cultural and, and all, all ideas and entrepreneurship initiatives, you know. Cassius, I think it's a brilliant example. Thank you, thank, thank you Cassius, for mentioning Romlux. I'm, 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 I'm particularly happy if we, the, the, the organization helped you uh, a little bit. What would you wish for as a president of an ONG than a paying customer or a happy member? Uh, that's that's that that's that's what we what we try to do to uh, to organize events to connect people, and we do it for the last fourteen years. Uh, I think we had more than one hundred events in Luxembourg, mostly with trustable partners like the ones today. Uh, we helped um, startups uh, from Romania, in principle, coming to major events here like ICT Spring Art Summit. Uh, new space conference, uh, Luxembourg Internet Days, uh, 5G conference. I remember, uh, and uh, that startup is is part today of the 5G. It was mentioned earlier, 5G uh, pilots. Um, we helped uh, in, in in these years officials from both countries to meet the business communities. Both Romanian presidents coming here. Uh, we organized also for the Luxembourg Prime Minister. We helped organizing the the, the meeting of the business community in Romania. Um, we had road shows, road shows like uh, the ones we did for the venture capitalists, Romanian venture capitalists, coming in 2018 to to uh, to Luxembourg. Uh, webinars like the webinar with uh, Luxer last Friday, you can watch it on YouTube. Uh, but also fantastic events, cultural events, which simply bring people together. It's not about doing business. We don't do business. We connect people. We had the inauguration of the Amazon headquarters with what else than the big Konstantin Brinkush and Edward Steichen, two amazing uh, figures of, of our both cultures. Dan Grigore, Gheorghe Zamfir. Uh, uh, we had the Romanian cosmonaut here with uh, George Schmidt and, uh, and Space Resources. Um, uh, I, I, I can mention a lot of, a lot of this and, and all that I, I made simply by volunteering and by, by amazing people in, uh, in the Romanian community here in Luxembourg. Um, I'm particularly happy we managed together to organize this event. It's been, I think, 12 years or more than that, that we did not talk about Luxembourg in Romania. And it's very, very unknown. So I hope, I hope with today's event, we, we built a little, uh, just a little bit uh, on that, uh, on that, uh, on that knowledge, which which goes before uh, and in front of any any business relation, so uh, in a word, I think we can provide a map and trusted contacts for every entrepreneur from uh, Romania trying to to reach here other peers or to reach institutions, and uh, um, above everything else in Luxembourg, you you should forget what you did in other countries, but Luxembourg is not the same. Here, the human factor is essential and the distance between people is small. So the human factor is the essential element of business in Luxembourg. I'm very happy if we can, we can help you with, uh, with, uh, with anything here in Endeavor. So thank you very much to all of you. President, thank you very much. Um, you're doing a, an incredible job there. Um, you know, just some of the, 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 the references that you speak about and some of the events uh, that you've been involved in are, are quite, quite incredible. Um, and, it, and it leads perfectly onto the next uh, speaker, actually. So our, our penultimate speaker, um, you're talking about building bridges. I think that's probably what the, the, next, uh, the next point is. Uh, we have the, the, the VP and Marketing Director of Luxair Group, Vincenzo Manzella, who is going to tell us something. Vincenzo. Hello, David. Hello, everyone. Thank you for, uh, for inviting Luxair in, uh, in such uh, an interesting uh, webinar. Uh, and also, thank you for giving me the, the word uh, right after Mr. Ratban, uh, with which we had the, the, the chance to, to, to exchange uh, lately. Uh, what, what, what I really like about this, this webinar and uh, 
you have been mentioning uh, it several times, is the will uh, I see from uh, men and women to create bridges, to create uh, cultural contamination, uh, to exchange the result of their, uh, of their job, uh, of their works, of their uh, talent, and to create a, a connection between, uh, between uh, culture. I, uh, I really appreciate that because this is exactly what Luxair has as a brand purpose. Uh, we don't make people fly on, uh, on planes. We create conditions in order for people to be uh, connected, the one with the others, uh, whether this is for leisure purpose or for business, uh, business pur purpose. So I could appreciate all the energy from, uh, from all the, uh, the, uh, the speakers. Uh, and of course, Luxair is willing to make uh, its part in all this, uh, in all this effort to, uh, to bring uh, Romanian and Luxembourgish uh, people uh, together on a, on, a, on a common platform. So uh, this is why basically a few months ago, as we want to be an enabler for, for that, we have launched a direct route uh, to Bucharest from Luxembourg. Uh, if you wanted to, to create a, a bridge, it should be a bridge of 2,000 kilometers. Uh, I suggest to take the plane to, uh, to come to, to Luxembourg or to visit uh, Bucharest. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a better solution. It's not because I'm at, I'm at Luxembourg. I would suggest it to, uh, to any friend of mine. Uh, so basically, the operation started in, in October. We had, unfortunately, to interrupt them uh, based on the uh, COVID situation. This is something we need to, uh, to deal with and we need, uh, as, a, as an airline, to, uh, to, to adapt. But the good news is that we are resuming the flights starting from the 29th of uh, March. Uh, so it's going to be a direct route performed with a Boeing. That means uh, a travel lasting two hours and 20 minutes, uh, connecting Bucharest directly to, uh, to Luxembourg. Uh, all of us uh, that have been uh, traveling for business know how it is important and how it is nice to have a direct flight connection, uh, a nice airport uh, on which to uh, to uh, to land, easily connecting you to the to the to the rest of the city, so that you can have a nice flight uh, and be uh, have the good rest you need in order to make your business your business meeting. We we hope business meetings will be uh, recovered uh, as fast as possible. Uh, it's true that we get used to those Zoom uh, webinars. They are nice. We kind we 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 somehow feel that we are lacking the the, uh, the human touch. So our wish is that as human beings we can start the sooner to remit in person uh, because this is something that uh, that mankind is uh, is used to uh, and it's necessary. Even though technology brings us uh, wonderful and astonishing solutions to overcome uh, difficult periods. So my wish is that. Uh, everybody of us can overcome this period and then have the pleasure, uh, in this case for business, uh, for business purpose, to be uh, to be uh, to connect with Luxembourg and to connect with uh, with the Romanian uh, business uh, network. Uh, I don't have much more to uh, to say. Uh, I mean, I I don't think I need to explain uh, how nice it is to travel with a Luxair. Uh, <laughs> with, with a luxury aircraft. I mean, I will not go, I will not push that far in, in, uh, in the promotion direction, but I mean, I think this is really an opportunity and a concrete action in order to, uh, to boost the, the, the interaction between the two countries. I think if you want to see what it's like to fly on a Luxair, you just need to look at social media recently. Um, there's been some, some quite fun uh, interactions with the, the cabin crew and the pilots and, and even with the ground crew occasionally. So thank, thank you, Vincenzo, that, that's uh, some good information. Um, you, just before we close off this, uh, this seminar today, um, I would like to thank everybody who's, who's been online. Um, please reach out to, to the, the, the people who have been speaking here today. If you need any information whatsoever through Lux Innovation, you can find the contacts on the website. Um, or through the Chamber of Commerce, of course, um, everybody is there and very happy to, to, to help you. So just um, for some, some closing words, I would like to pass uh, the, the floor over to Mihai uh, Ferreru, who is the Honorary Consul of Luxembourg in Bucharest. 
And from myself, I would like to thank everyone who was here today. Thank you very much for inviting me. It was a great pleasure and honor for me to be here with, with you today. It was a very, very interesting panel, very interesting panel. Uh, what can I say? Uh, I, uh, we consulate, uh, we are the consulate in Bucharest and the Seoul Ambassador uh, Steinwitz, we are, we are ready for give you all the support for all the initiative. We are here for, for, for uh, give all the information about the travel, about the contact, the diplomatic field. Uh, thank you very much for the interesting, interesting panel. Uh, uh, congratulations for everybody. It was very nice, very interesting. And we invited you to, to come in Romania. And also, because we have a direct flight now, we go, we, we use it, Luxair, to come in Luxembourg and à la prochaine. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, everybody. It was a great pleasure. And thank you very much for everything. And also all the, the salutation for, uh, for Mr. Radu, because he is... Uh, he, he make a bridge between in Romania and Luxembourg community. Uh, thank you very much for the, all the friends and, and congratulations for this wonderful initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you for those, those closing words. So um, thank you for, for that. I just saw something come through on the chat. Um, apparently there's an interesting event for Romanian companies tomorrow about Luxembourg government aids and grants. Um, if you go to the Loft website, you'll be able to see that. That was a message from Razvan at Rumlux. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you uh, a fantastic uh, rest of your day. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.